Today in the lumberyard, I'm going to talk to you about a chain mortiser. This is a Makita brand. And the first one I ever saw, a student brought in, and I asked him, what's that handle do? He goes, I don't know. I don't use it. I said, okay. So he set up and he showed us how he, he did what he, he would do with it, make a mortise. The second chain mortiser that came in, a different student had, I asked him, what's that handle do? He goes, I don't know. I don't use it. So I was, he showed me how he used this handle. And uh, I thought that was a little unusual that you have a machine, and you don't understand completely how to use it, and use it, and use it to its full potential. So when I bought my chain mortiser for a specific job, I sat down and I read the instruction book from beginning to end so I could completely understand how to use it. When you clamp it down using this lever to your timber, you can then plunge in six positions. One here, where it's aiming. You can then tilt the head and plunge a second position where it's aiming. And tilt it a third time and plunge a third position. After you've plunged three positions, you can then throw the lever and move it back this distance and plunge three more times. So you can plunge six positions from one clamping before you got to move anything. So the other thing they showed in the instruction book was this little yellow tab here. Well, this little yellow tab lines up with the front of the chain. And there's a bar across the back in metric because this is a Japanese tool. And I use the end of the bar as a zero, but I actually use the end of the bar to line up on this side. So with the front of the tab and the bar, I have my chain lined up to this corner of the mortise. Now I needed to understand where the back of the chain lined up so that when I move it, move it back using the handle, I could make the back of the mortise the right width. Well, there's nothing on the bar showing the back of the mortise. So what we did was we took and put a straight edge across the back of the chain, and using a scratch all, we scratched a mark on the little yellow bar. So now I know, using the little yellow bar, where the back of the chain will punch. And that helps me line up to the back side of my mortise. So that's a little modification I did myself. Now in today's project here, today's project here, I'm doing a three inch deep plus the housing mortise for a uh, girt that's going to be a door header in this frame on the side wall of the frame. And this is square rule layout, and it's two by two. So this is a two inch offset and then a two inch mortise. So one of the ways I discovered or developed was when I was down in Atlanta working with my friend Dave. I want to make sure that this chain mortise plunges exactly on two inches. and I've drawn the outline of the mortise with a pencil. I've scribed the outline of the mortise with my utility knife so that the chain mortise won't chip out beyond the scribe, which is standard procedure, which is my standard procedure. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap the chain while spinning on that first cut and see if I'm two inches. I'm going to put on my protective earmuffs. Mm -hmm. 
I have my caliper set for two inches like I always do. And I can now, with the chain mortise swung out of the way, drop my caliper in and check my offset. And I can see that it's just a little loose. So I can turn this handle back, which is counterclockwise, and move the chain mortiser back just a fraction and do a second test. And that is right on. So now I know that my chain mortiser is going to mortise two inches off of this face. I have my depth set so that the bottom of the bar will be beyond the bottom of the mortise, and I can plunge these two cuts. Okay, so I plunged the first one and the second one. I threw the handle into reverse, and I plunged that one and that one. So I did four positions. I then turned the crank and cranked the carriage back until the uh, line that I scribed on my little yellow tab lines up with the back side of my mortise. And I'm going to do a test cut now to see if I'm in the right position. I meant a test cut to make sure I was in the right location. The way I test that now is with my framing square, because my framing square is two inches. If it fits right in there, then I know that I have cranked it back to the correct distance. And it's a little bit tight but it's not bad. I'd rather have it a little tight and then just pare a fine little bit with my chisel than to have it to be too fat and too loose. So that's the way I use the framing square and the caliper to set my chain mortiser. Another tip I wanted to pass on is to always Pick up your chain mortiser and carry it off your timber with the top handle and not with the side handles. If you're still plugged in and you pick it up by the side handles, you could accidentally pull the trigger. So always carry your chain mortiser by the top handle. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed these two tips.